Welcome to the third lecture on association rule binding. We have seen the a priori algorithm. What I do in a priori algorithm is to reduce the number of candidate item sets using the a priori principle. So, if we recollect the steps of finding the association rule. So, what we do is that first we uh, suppose there are m number of or d number of items, we try all possible item sets uh, in x and y and see if their combination x y is frequent. That means, they appear more than mean sub fraction of total transactions. And once we identify the frequent item sets, next step we do the rule generation. So, if you recollect that the, uh, the all possible item sets, for example, if we have 5 items A, B, C, D, E can be arranged in a lattice like this. And if we do not do any intelligent thing, what we have to do is that check whether each of these combinations how many times they appear in the total number of transactions and then threshold them based on the mean sum and tell them to be. What the FRI principle says is that if some item set A B is not frequent, then none of his supersets A B C A B D A B A B C D A B C can be frequent. So, for example, if milk and butter themselves are not frequent, milk, butter, sugar, three cannot be frequent. Okay, if two are not frequent, three cannot be frequent. They obviously, three will appear in less number of transactions than just two. So, this principle we use to prune them. We uh, just uh, can remove among the candidates and evaluate for the rest. So, this was used in the FRI algorithm. What where what we do is that go down this way from the lattice, we go down this way from the lattice, take the single item sets which are frequent, then from the single item sets combine to produce frequent two item sets and from the two produce three item sets. So, how do you produce 2 from 3? You see that suppose A E and A D they are frequent, you can join these two if they differ, uh, if they differ by uh, or if they have if, if they differ by only 1. So, E R D and E R differ. So, if we join them you get A D E. So, A D and A V, if we join, we take, we get A D E. Okay. So, what we do in the FRI principle is that from k frequent item sets, we produce k plus 1 size frequent item sets. How? By joining two items which are sharing some of the items except one. So, A B C and A B D. We, these are three item sets, they will to they will join to produce a four item set A B C D, A B C A B D joins to produce A B D. So, let me write down. So, if I have if A B C is frequent and A B D is frequent, I can join them, they are frequent, I can join them to produce a, B, C, D as candidate frequent. Note that it may be frequent, it may not be frequent. So, to actually check if it is frequent, I have to again go through this transaction. But if A, B, C is not frequent, suppose C, D, E is not frequent, not frequent, then definitely A, C, D is also not frequent, not frequent. Okay, if something is not frequent, its superset cannot be frequent. 
All right. So this way from three item sets, I produce four item sets. Item set from three item sets, I produce four item sets. Okay, of size three and size four. So this way you go on doing, doing and checking. Now it may turn out that A B C D itself is not frequent. A B C D itself, A B C are frequent, A B D and frequent, A B C D is not frequent. Then definitely A B C D E cannot be frequent. Okay, this way we go on. All right. So now let us come to the next part. Let us come to the next part. about rule generation. So, we now have some item sets which are known to be frequent, what we want to do is that now split them into left and right halves. So, I know say A B C D is frequent. Okay. Say for example, A B C D is frequent. So, what are the rules I can produce from A B C D? I can produce A B C associated with D, I can produce A B associated with C D, I can produce A associated with B C D. Okay. So, now using this frequent item set, I will test whether the, but uh, now whether testing whether the rules are frequent, I need to test no longer the support criteria because support they are already highly supported, they are frequent, frequent item sets. I need to test the confidence criteria. What is the confidence criteria? That means, the fraction of time only D appears, the ratio of number of the times only D appears or rather the ratio of number of times A, B, C, D appears to the ratio of the number of times only A B C appear that is the confidence. So, it is number of times sorry number of times A B C D appears total number of times divided by number of times a B C appears that is my confidence that is my confidence. Okay. If this is greater than some threshold called the mean conf mean conf I would say it is a valid rule. Okay. Now, uh, given a single item set, I can have various such partitions. So, should I check all of them? The thing is that even here, there is something like that after I or anti-monotone property. Okay. So, what it says is that if you take the same set of items, let us say A, B, C, D, then I have the rule that the number of if the number of elements in the left hand side are more number of elements in the left hand side are more then its confidence is more than this. You can naturally see from here that more number of elements you have in the left hand side. So, the more the denominator side size is the larger this ratio will be more the denominator side is larger this ratio will be because uh, more and more things will be included because A, B, C, D appears in much less fraction of only A or only A, B as opposed to A, B, C. So, you can see here this ordering is in terms of the size of the left hand side A, B, C, A, B, A remaining goes to the right hand side. Their confidence can be ordered like this this you can easily verify, this follows directly from the definition of confidence. Okay. You can take a minute and verify this, that this will always be true. If this is true, the, if this is true, 
if this is true I can now form a lattice among the rules like this. Okay. How do I form a lattice among the rules? In the top of the lattice I take all the attributes in the left hand side and then gradually move one attribute to the right and then two attribute to the right and so on. Okay. So, what is the relation here is that the left hand side C D is a subset of B C D. Similarly, the left hand side B D is a subset of B C D. Okay, that way we form like say D is a subset of C D, D is a subset of B D, D is a subset of A D. We look at so this relations that is uh, this edges are basically the uh, checking for subsetness of the left hand side. Okay. So, now we, you can actually check that now there is ordering. So, this more number of items in the left hand side will lower the confidence. We have already talked about that ordering in the previous slide, you have this ordering. So, this will have low confidence than the others. So, you can see that it follows directly from that rule that if this is found to be below the confidence threshold, all these rules will also be below the confidence threshold. In other words, you can prune the lattice. So, this gives me an, uh, an, an principle of uh, obtaining the rule. Suppose C D associated with A B and B D associated A D A C are two valid rules. We can join them if, 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 the, uh, in, if the right hand side have the same prefix so A A. Okay, we can join them by moving one rule from here to the, the common rule from here to the other. Okay, so, A, B, C I can move. Okay, so, it will be high confidence. Okay, so, this is how you get the rules. Uh, the thing is that after all this process, after all this process you get a number of such rules, okay, and they satisfy the support and confidence. The thing is that sometimes even after satisfying support and confidence criteria, you need to evaluate using a third criteria, I mean further criteria, whether these are valid rules. So, this was actually done in the general process of data mining itself use something called a interestingness measure of a rule, how interesting and rule is. We apply it in several places pre processing mining to get it. So, we will now briefly discuss um, for the rules extracted by the previous algorithm, what are their evaluations? in terms of the interestingness. So, for that I use a contingency table which means like this. Suppose I have a rule x to y, this counts a number of basically supports of how many times x happens as well as y happens, x happens as well as not y happens, not x happens as well as y happens and so on. So, this is the definition. So, uh, pardon me for this mistake, this bars will come to the top, they mean non, none, uh, not this x and y. So, now you can define various measures on this. I will I will mention about some of them. 
So, uh, let me give a motivating example. Suppose this is a contingency table and I have an association rule like this and these are my confidence factor. So, even though if I have a high confidence factor, this rule may be misleading that people who buy tea also buy coffee. Okay, so, you need some additional measures. The root of all these methods are a um, uh, principle called statistical independence. Okay. So, here in this case the events are people buying some S and people buying some B. So, here is an something else example. So, student swimming or student biking. So, swimming and biking. So, we have the joint probability both S and B and the product probability of individual S and individual B. If they are exactly same, we say they are independent. If this is greater than this, we say they are positively correlated. If it is less, we say they are negatively correlated. So, using these probabilities one can define measures like this lift, interest, P s some P s value phi coefficient. So, they are y given x divided by only y is lift. This is a very common measure used. So, uh, we will see how to define these terms in terms of the contingency table, but first probabilistically define them. So, um, you have your lift which is y given x by y, you have interest given by joint probability by product of the individual probabilities which is nothing but the this ratio of this quantity to this quantity. You have P s which is difference of P x y minus P x minus P. Note that each of this quantity interest it would be 1 if they are independent. P s would be 0 if they are independent, lift would be 1 if they are independent. Okay. So, if we have this kind of contingency table, if you remember, remember the definition of contingency, it means 14 items, 14 transactions have both tea and coffee, 5 transactions have tea does not have coffee, 75 transactions does not have tea have coffee and so on. So, the lift is 0.9. Okay. So, it is negatively, uh, if the lift is less than 1, it is negatively associated. So, even though confidence is high, they are actually negatively associated. Mm. So, here is a list of measures that one might use. The uh, I have talked about the xi coefficient and the P s measure, P r test is a pair of measure there are Zaccard coefficients. So, A and B are the item sets. Uh, so, probability you can read at what fraction of the total item set this A and B appears. Okay. So, support is simply both A and B appear for the rule A to B, for the rule A to B, both A and B appear. Okay. So, I can define all these different quantities. as my interestingness methods. You, you can uh, have a look at them. I can use all these quantities as my interestingness methods. They are, they are variations of each other. In certain situations, certain things work well, other situations, other things work well. Similarly, there are other interesting measures which are subjective based on the domain uh, based on the domain of the of the problem so you can define uh, all these ones i talked about are all are objective that is independent of domain
there is an alternate criteria known as unexpectedness which says that if you already have some knowledge and some evidence what is the value of the new knowledge what is the novelty of the new knowledge new rule okay so this you can this uh, venn diagram illustrates that you can have this kind of situation which are for the extracted patterns So, okay. So, I stop my uh, uh, discussion on association rule here. So, in summary, what you have learnt is to find out, define, define what is an association rule, how to apply support confidence measures, how to apply the a priori algorithm to get frequent item sets, and then how to apply the um, uh, rule generation using the a priori on the frequent item sets to get rules. Then we have studied different interestingness measures like jacquard coefficient, like p s values, like lift to evaluate the extracted rules which you can apply. In my later part in the course when we study visualization, we will study some of these visualization techniques for rules. And finally, we defined that it is not just interesting and valid, it also has to be new novel with respect to the current domain. So, this closes my discussion on association rules. In my next uh, slides, next lectures, I will go into another class of models which are predictive like it helps you classify. So, uh, given a new situation for example, mm, I am now telling people who buy this also buy another item. Now, I can see if a new customer comes uh, without uh, can from his profile of the customer can I predict what he will buy. Okay, can I predict what he will buy based on certain previous observation. So, that forms my next topic on classifications, classification rules. Okay, so, thank you for today, I will cover the next in the next chapter.